The internet may look like a playground of memes, shopping carts, and endless scrolling, but behind the curtain, it's really a surveillance theme park where every click, swipe, and even that sneeze your mic picked up is fair game. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on 13 sneaky tracking methods that follow you across the web. I'll show you how each one works, where it's been caught in the wild, and why the next method is always creepier than the last. Buckle up, by the end, you won't see your browser the same way again. Cookies, the OG breadcrumbs. Cookies are the original spy snack. A website leaves a tiny file in your browser, like a sticky note saying, hi, welcome back. They're useful for logins and shopping carts, but advertisers quickly weaponize them, dropping third-party cookies across multiple sites to build dossiers about you. Back in the 2000s, ad networks loved these digital chromes. Think of it like eating in one bakery, then having every bakery in town mysteriously know you're obsessed with croissants. But if cookies feel invasive, wait until you meet their invisible cousins that sneak in through the back door. Third-party cookies and tracking pixels, the party crashers. These aren't set by the site you're on, but by someone else invited in. Tracking pixels are tiny, invisible images that quietly report your visit to an ad network. By appearing on thousands of sites, the same tracker can connect your journeys across the web. The 2010s were filled with these freeloaders, until browsers began blocking them. Imagine an invisible tattletale following you to every party, whispering in the corner, he ordered nachos again. Creepy, sure, but what if websites didn't need cookies or pixels and could identify you just by your digital DNA? Browser fingerprinting, your device's DNA. Your browser leaks quirks, screen size, fonts, plugins, time zone, even how it renders graphics. Combine enough of these signals and you've got a fingerprint as unique as your actual thumb. The EFF's panoptic click proved how scarily unique browsers are, and advertisers jumped in. Clearing cookies doesn't matter when your laptop hums its own weird tune. It's like spotting someone in a crowd because they wear mismatched socks and whistle Hamilton songs. But if that's not persistent enough, some trackers built cookies that refuse to die. Ever cookies or super cookies. Scatter your ID across dozens of storage spots. Cookies, flash LSOs, HTML5 local storage, e-tags, and even your cache. Delete one and the others restore it instantly. Sammy Kamkar's infamous Ever Cookie project showed just how hard they were to kill. It's like battling a horror villain that just won't stay down. Chop one head off, three more appear holding clipboards full of your browsing history. But villains don't just hide in storage. Sometimes they sneak in using the very thing meant to speed up your web browsing, the cache. E-tag and cache tracking, the sneaky post-it note. Web caches save time, but trackers figured out how to use them for ID tags. Servers hand out files with unique e-tags, and when your browser checks later, it repeats that tag back. Congratulations, you've been recognized without a single cookie. Researchers in the 2010s found e-tag abuse in the wild, rebuilding deleted identifiers. It's like borrowing a library book and discovering someone left a sticky note inside that screams your name every time you check it out. If caches can betray you, what about your actual address, the one baked into every request you make online? IP address tracking, following your digital neighborhood. Your IP address is basically your online zip code. Every request you send includes it, revealing your rough location and ISP. Sites log it, ad networks stitch it into profiles, and some ISPs even injected unique subscriber IDs into your traffic. Remember Verizon's infamous super cookie scandal? Yep, that was network level tracking. Your IP is a glowing neon sign pointing to your house, but that's just where you live. Your phone, on the other hand, tattles about where you are, down to the coffee shop you just walked into. Mobile IDs and location tracking. Your phone, the snitch. Smartphones broadcast advertising IDs like IDFA on iOS or GAID on Android. Pair that with GPS, Wi-Fi networks, and Bluetooth beacons, and you've got a scary accurate map of your life. Data brokers built businesses around selling this location intel until Apple's privacy prompts made IDFA optional. Still, your phone is like a nosy roommate constantly texting people about your whereabouts. He's at Starbucks again, yes, the same one. But even beyond devices, trackers know what you click, how you scroll, and when you hesitate because they're watching your every interaction.
Behavioral Profiling, The Puppet Master. This is the final form, combining cookies, fingerprints, IPs, purchases, and more into a behavioral profile. Advertisers don't just know what you did, but predict what you'll do next. The Cambridge Analytica scandal in 2018 proved how powerful this data can be, influencing politics with psychographic targeting. It's like someone writing a 50-page essay on your guilty Netflix binges and selling it to the highest bidder. But behavioral profiling doesn't stop here, because trackers have even sneakier tools built right into the links you click. URL tracking. Breadcrumbs in the address bar. Ever click the link and seen question mark UTM underscore source equals newsletter at the end? That's URL tracking. Those tags tell marketers exactly where you came from and what campaign lured you in. Redirects and short links make this even sneakier, bouncing you through tracking servers before landing you at the final page. Remember all those oddly personalized ads after opening a special offer email? Yep, thank those UTM tags. It's like wearing a forehead sticker that says, came from midnight email blast. But if URLs are obvious, wait until we talk about the tiny scripts that watch your every mouse move. JavaScript tracking, the tiny script that could. JavaScript powers the modern web and also modern spying. Those analytic scripts running in your browser aren't just counting page views. They're logging clicks, hovers, scroll depth, even how long you pause before rage quitting at checkout. Tools like Google Analytics and countless SDKs thrive on this data. It's like having a hyper-attentive waiter who not only writes down your order, but also notes how many times you sighed before picking dessert. And if JavaScript can watch clicks, what if it could replay your entire session like a surveillance movie? Session replay scripts. Someone watched you click. Session replay is exactly what it sounds like. Sites record your interactions, keystrokes, clicks, page scrolls, and can replay it later like a DVR. Companies pitched it as improving user experience, but researchers showed it often captured way more than intended, including sensitive data. Think Hotjar, Full Story, or older analytics tools. It's like CCTV for your browsing session. Useful for site owners, terrifying for users. But what if trackers don't just replay what you did? What if they stash permanent identifiers in your browser attic? Local Storage and Index DB. Local Storage and Index DB were built for convenience, letting web apps save data on your machine for offline use. But trackers turned these into sticky lockers for IDs, hiding identifiers where casual users rarely look. Delete your cookies? No problem. The tracker just respawns them from local storage. It's like clearing out your fridge only to find old takeout hidden in the attic. And while local storage sticks around on one device, authentication takes things to a whole new level, tying all your activity to you. User Authentication you signed in and traced. When you log in with Facebook, Google, or even a store account, you hand over a stable ID, your email, your profile, your history. Platforms love this because it ties together your actions across devices and sessions. Suddenly, the anonymous browser is a labeled named human in a giant CRM database. The convenience of sign in with Google comes at the cost of linking everything you do to your identity. It's like finally taking off the mask at a masquerade and realizing the hosts were tracking you the whole time. And if authentication connects your offline and online selves, imagine what happens when all these methods get combined into a single super profile. And there you have it. 13 ways the internet spies on you from innocent looking cookies to full-blown GPS stalkers. On their own, each trick feels sneaky, but stitched together they form a surveillance monster that knows you better than your best friend. The question is, which one gave you chills? Tell me in the comments, because I guarantee everyone's answer will be different. If you had fun peeling back the curtain on the web's biggest secret, hit that like button and subscribe. We've got plenty more dark corners of the internet to expose. Until then, just remember, the internet isn't watching you for free. You're the product, and business is booming.